Hello, Bass family, and welcome to Everything Bass. I was just showing you Tapping Pattern 24. Um, really, on, on the onset of creating this channel, I wanted to make sure that I mixed in very simplistic, very uh, accessible patterns for those who are just getting into tapping with some that are more adventurous that might push uh, certain intermediate to advanced tappers into new areas. But um, I've been hitting some pretty challenging tapping patterns uh, up to this point. So I wanted to show you a simple way that you can create for your band or your, um, your own projects a, a cool tapping um, foundation for a song that uses very easy technique, no independence is needed, but can actually dynamically and melodically say quite a lot. So in this one, you're gonna have, for this particular pattern, you're gonna be tapping on the A on the seventh fret of the D string to the D on the seventh fret of the G string. And you'll either tap ascending or descending. To keep it simple, I alternate. So on the first beat, uh, I, uh, I play a C, then I go low, high, low. Next note, the D, high, low, high. I add a B flat, low, high, low. High, low, high, G, low, high, low, F, high, low, high, come up to the E, low, high, low, high, low, high. So, you know, obviously the technique is quite simple. So we start looking at, like, how did I come up with these notes? Um, well, it's funny. I actually started by just playing the bass line. I wanted to find, and I wrote this just for this video. This isn't part of a bigger composition yet. Um, so I, I kind of was running around and I knew I wanted to play long tones to kind of sound, uh, sound uh, create a real foundation for a vibe. So um, so I liked it. Now it resolves and really sounds like it's in the key of D. Um, and that's ultimately where I placed it and that's how I built the, my, my harmony above it. But I start on the C because I just like the tension of that. But is the really kind of the starting point. So when I chose the upper notes, knowing that it's, it really felt like it resolved the D. If you listen to the to the, the bass line under the tapping, the ear kind of rests on that D, it resolves to that D. So when I, you know, because initially I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna do something in C, it'll be cool. But I really got one. No, I really feel it. You know, it's really seeming like to tell me it's informed in D. So that's what told me what I want to do with my right hand. And that's, I just did five octave five. So I toyed with that since that was my target for my key. Then I want to see, okay, well, what is that? If I keep that as an ostinato, I keep that constant, doesn't change no matter what happens with the left hand. How does that sound against each chord or each root, if you will, that I play? So against the C, it sounds beautiful because it's basically a six and then a two, a nine, and then back to a six. I love that. I think that sounds great. D, obviously that works. That's a power chord. The B flat sounds great. The A, G, against each one. The E, now this is a little bit of a, a traffic jam here. You just have to make sure you have enough room for tap all three notes. Now, if you're really new to tapping, and this seems like something you want to give a shot to, I, I encourage everyone to give it a try, because maybe it'll inspire you to do something new on your own that's just off of that, but this is the catalyst for a new idea. Um, don't alternate the directions of the tapping. Just do everything the same direction. That makes it easier. So you can do everything with just the ascending taps. Actually, you still want to go up and down. Now you might prefer that, um, but I like the variation that comes from playing, now invert the tapping. Yeah, it's simple, but it's cool. And what's nice is if you're in like a trio situation, this kind of tapping, um, really you're, you're thinking like a piano player and you're giving a lot of harmonic um, content so that the guitarist or maybe you have a sax player 
or maybe a piano player, there's a lot for them to improvise on there because you're giving them this baseline, you're giving these other colors and tensions. Now, if you want to make it more challenging, one thing you can do is look at each one of those roots that you're playing and alter the tapping to create different uh, chords uh, and not necessarily keep it these same notes. Um, so like I, with the C, maybe I would do a nine. Then go to the D. Now maybe here I'll go up and let's see, what would I do? Maybe I'll include the octave and the fifth above. That's kind of cool. So you see how by just taking each core, each root that you play individually and looking at it, if you just know a little bit about your chord theory or scale theory, you can actually kind of target and try different intervals. Um, my suggestion there is if you know your chord tones and you're starting to improvise and moving the right hand around, stick within chord tones at first. Build that up and then listen and go, oh, you know what, instead of going to the fifth here, maybe it'd be cool if I just play the fourth because that leads into a half step of the, you know, is, there's ways and reasons to, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. If you look at the entire palette of colors, all, qual all the chromatic tones, you can get overwhelmed. So sometimes the best thing you do is limit chord tones only, get it down, but then listen closely and let your ear decide, oh, you know, that might be cool. The other thing I like to do is put a common tone amongst two chords. Uh, a tap a note or two notes that belong to both chords in some fashion because that can be a neat way of creating kind of this cool uh, movement within your tapping piece. So that's tapping pattern 24. Um, you know, mine, you know, I love it if you learn mine. That's why I put it up here that hopefully you can learn it and it pushes you or tries new ideas. But share your own. Take a baseline you create, any baseline. Again, if you're new to tapping, don't do something really syncopated and crazy at first. Just come up with some kind of bass line that you think is kind of cool. And then figure out, you know, start with one note and just... And, and tap through and then maybe add another note uh, and get creative with rhythms. But it's a lot of fun and you really, if... And there's a big underline here. If you really look at the notes and figure out how they relate to the chord or the root you're playing, then it's, it becomes even a bigger, more valuable exercise because you start reinforcing your understanding of harmony. And that's never a bad thing. So guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Tapping Pattern 24. You can, of course, get the sheet music written in standard notation and tab with special notation to show you which notes are tapped with the uh, plucking hand uh, by going to the link in the description for my Patreon account. Become a Backstage Pass monthly subscriber. It's only $8 a month. And once you pay the $8 for the entire month, you can download all. I mean, there's over 150 uh, posts there. And you can download all the sheet music. You can download all the WAV files just for that $8 a month. Uh, but that money does go to me buying better gear here. It's already, I've been able to upgrade the sound. And um, shortly, I'll be moving to a new, uh, sh smaller room. I think sometimes... The sound here is a little diffused because it's actually in quite a large room and I'm just taking a corner of it. So I'm going to be moving to a smaller room where I can control the sound a little better, hopefully get you better audio, which is always my goal. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Please, 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 if you have not done so, it would mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the channel. Just go to the bottom, hit the subscribe button, tap that little bell icon so you're notified every time I post videos, which is usually on every weekend. Uh, occasionally, I'll post one or two during the week if it's something I came up with and I'm too excited and can't wait. Uh, and of course, like, share, subscribe, do all those things. That really helps grow everything base. It means a lot to me and I hope to continue to keep bringing you new things to try, new avenues to approach, kind of freshen up your practice time so you can get better and have fun doing it. Thanks guys and I'll see you at the next video.